Hey guys, welcome back to another Sorted George Garage with me, Julian. Time to put our rebuilt 440 back in our 66 New Yorker. Here we go. Well, come on, June. Roll titles. But before we do that, I need to finish off tidying up the engine bay. Uh, my mistake, obviously I was busy doing the engine. Uh, as you know, I've done the bulkhead and I've done the inner fenders. I just want to do the uh, the chassis rails and the cross member. So it's going to take me two minutes uh, and then obviously we'll put the engine back in. Well, it's going to be two minutes for you anyway, let's put it that way. <laughs> and then we'll put the engine back in. Uh, have a look at this. Look how thick this is here. Here's my screwdriver. How thick that is. Right, let's get on, shall we? It's quite late, I was about to go in, but it's had a quick dust in a primer. I missed a bit there, look, right in front of my face. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna let all this lot dry and uh, I'll scrape that off tomorrow. Around the other side, there you go. Not bad, it's all right. Like I say, all I'm doing is just tidying it up. I'm not doing a full on restoration or anything like that. You know what I mean? It's, this ain't gonna be a concourse thing, but obviously it would look nice seeing as the new 440 is all painted up as well. Um, yeah, right, sort of George. I'll see you tomorrow. Here we go. Right, next evening, that's that lot done. Sort of George, that's banging. That's tidied that up nice. What I've done over there, uh, that's obviously where the battery tray sits. So I've just sniffed in a bit of primer um, because that was bare metal. Um, and what I should do, the, uh, what was it, stone chip I used, wasn't it, down here in the scuttle area. So what I should do is put a bit of that stone chip, because uh, that was a good match. So I shall sort of sniff a little bit in over there, uh, and perhaps along the bottom of the actual, sort of where the bottom of the radiator sits. Uh, just to tidy it up, uh, and so that it's not in bare metal, as it were, you know what I mean? Right, we're ready to go. So... I think to put that baby to the test, we need to put her back in her nest. I'm just sorting out a few bits and bobs before we put the engine in tomorrow. Uh, I just want to show you the uh, engine mounts. They are slightly different. Now, the, the actual rubber mounting themselves, they are exactly the same, all right, for left and right. You've got this little cut out here, okay? The nut is on the left-hand side as we look at it, and then this one here, that is just a hole for the bolt to go through and then screw into the nut, okay? Now, it's the actual bracket that goes and mounts to the engine, the engine block, okay, that is different. Now, this is the right-hand side, and you've got a sweep here going up to the right, okay? 
This is the left hand side and there's a slope going up to the left. Underneath, that is empty, okay? But on the left hand side, there is a tube where one of the bolts goes through, okay? Most of the bolts are the same. There's six of them, five of them are the same, well, four of them are the same. There's one a little bit longer, and then you've got this huge, great big long one that goes through that tube there, okay? So they are slightly different as regards the mounting brackets, but the rubbers are exactly the same. Right, next day, let's put her in. Cue the music, Ju. Sort with George. Break time. I think we're there. I think we are there. Right. That's in. That's in. Oh, that's in. She is in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, hallelujah. Oh, here, look. Johnny, come lately. Well, you come to inspect it, have you? Now it's done. Yes, Father. All oh, right, okay. Right, yep, she's in. She's made it up nicely to the transmission. Uh, on the 727s, they've got like two dowels, one on either side. Engine mount bolts are in on both sides. Um, yeah, there's two dowel pins. I know you can see it better on this side. There you go, just down there. So it just needs to be sort of mated up, squeezed up a little bit. And there's the other engine mount bolt, so... Sort of George, that's in. Um, yeah, at last. Uh, that was, I know it's two minutes for you, but that was about four hours to do that. Um, first time I've ever done it, you know, so uh, I was expecting a few problems. I mean, obviously, it's so much easier when you've got two or three people, um, but doing it on your own, getting a great big lump in like that on your own, um, yeah, it, uh, you've got to do everything, haven't you, on your own? Um, obviously. Uh, right, I'm supposed to be about to bulk this lot up now. Tomorrow. I don't think my back will take it. <laughs> Here we go, see you tomorrow. <laughs> right, it's the next day. Uh, I started to get the ancillaries out and realised I hadn't cleaned some of them. So I've just got the power steering pump in bits at the moment, so that's going to get a clean. Uh, I've got the idler pulley to do. Uh, for the water pump, I've got the aircon pump to do. Not that that works, but at least it will look pretty underneath the hood. Uh, I've got my fan to do. I've got the, uh, in the back there, there's the vacuum canister. I've got my starter motor to give a tidy up and also my flex plate cover. So I'm not going to bore you with that lot. I'll do that lot and then obviously we'll come back when we put it all in. Here we go. Sort of George. That's banging. Right, a couple of days later, uh, ancillaries, ancillaries, ancillaries. Good God, here we go. Right, power steering pump. Um, I'm hoping that you can see this. Right, now this was like it when I got it. Can you see? Right, that's the, this is the pulley on the power steering pump, and it needs to go to just at the end of my finger there. See that V? Okay. 
that's the one that it needs to go on but it's just slightly out right now to be fair it was like it when i bought it and i did notice that the um a lot of the pulley was just sort of like coming off at the angle and i'd like to straighten it out it seems like somebody has I don't know whether they've stood on it to try and get the tension or what. I haven't got a clue, but it's like it was bent. So what I've done, I've put a couple of washers in uh, between the bracket uh, and the actual unit itself, which has kind of brought this back a bit. So rather than the power steering pump being like that, it's now brought it back like that. But now I need to actually move the whole unit over just a fraction. Uh, it might be all right. But I'd rather try and uh, do something. See, it should be there, but at the moment it's lit. It's only just slightly out, but it's out and I don't like it. Um, where else we got? Uh, yeah, right. So we've got the uh, water pump pulley on. Um, I'm just doing, at the moment, the... Uh, I've taken starting to take apart the um, air con pump. And then obviously that can go on to the front. So I got the uh, proper pulley on there, etc. I was toying with the idea of actually making my own pulley, um, like get another one of these. Um, but I'm just like, oh, yeah. But if it goes wrong, like you know what I mean. So it would look better with that, I suppose. Um, I know it don't work, but hey, it is what it is. Uh, that'll be nice, all cleaned up. Uh, there's the vacuum canister. That's done, so that can go on the back. I need to put in the starter motor, like I say, and do the exhausts. That's why she is up in the air at the moment, as you do. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm doing at the moment. Uh, I will come back when that lot's done uh, and I'll get the starter motor in and everything else, like, you know. So, so with George, right, I'll see thee in a bit. Banging. <laughs> right, so the next day, we're up underneath. Uh, so we're under starter's orders, that's in, that's done. Uh, the exhaust pipe to exhaust manifold, that's in. New bolts, they are torqued up to 50 foot-pounds, which is what they should be. Uh, right, flex plate. Now, uh, obviously that's in. The torque converter bolts, they're in. Now, bearing in mind, they're only like a real tiny little bolt, okay? Um, you've got to make sure... You've got to make sure that obviously you use some thread lock because they're only, believe it or not, it's about 22 foot pounds. It's not a lot. Uh, yeah, 20 to 22, 22 and a half, something daft like that. So it's not a lot of uh, torque to hold them in place, but you've only got a real tiny bit of thread um, or length, as it were. So bit of thread lock on that, so that they don't come because you don't want them to come out. Basically, yeah. So they don't come out. Uh, yeah, that's in. So that's done. You've got the little bracket on the uh, transmission or the uh, the bottom transmission bolt there that holds the bracket for your transmission cooler lines. Uh, yeah, that side's done as well. Like I say, they're up to fifty foot pounds. They've got. Uh, they've got the exhaust gaskets in them. Uh, excuse me as I roll out. Uh, so, yeah, right. So there you go. She's uh, she's ready to go there. I think I can't remember if I said the vacuum canister is in. I don't know if I said that uh, uh, last night. Uh, yeah, distributor. I actually cleaned up the housing, like the body. Yeah, that's come out really nice, actually. I must admit, nice and smart. I'm just waiting for a vacuum canister to turn up. Because uh, I ordered the wrong one, um, as you can see from this photograph here, uh, the arm is different. It goes a different way. I um, I ordered one for a '72 New Yorker. Uh, my fault. Didn't realise about the arm, uh, obviously until it got here, and I tried to put it together. Uh, and yes, the arm was sort of coming over at a funny angle instead of going that way. Didn't want to know. It is what it is. Never mind. Eh? Uh, right, I'm also waiting for new um, vacuum hose to turn up. I had to cut the old one off because it was obviously so hard, if you like. Uh, so I had to cut it off of there. Well, of course, now the the original one, I can't get it back over because uh, it is just so brittle. And it's like, you know what? Get a new one. That's the best thing. Uh, yeah, so I think today's job is to get on with the um, aircon pump. Uh, still got her set up. 
ready to fire up as well. Right, so George, let me crack on and I'll come back. Here we go. <laughs> right, I'm cracking on with this. Uh, it's actually come out quite nice, actually. Uh, it looks like a little uh, petrol engine, doesn't it? A little motorbike engine. Um, yeah, so I've given that a good clean out. And what I've done, uh, you know the bits here, okay, and also on this, you know, like this front bit. They basically are part of the aircon, uh, and they look like that. So what I've done, I've cut the actual pieces off uh, and just welded in, uh, like basically to fill in the hole. Uh, I've done that one and I have done that one. I've just been, excuse the mess, I've just been chucking out the bits. Literally, I just cut them off with a grinder, as you do. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm doing with that. I just, just so that it looks smarter, you know what I mean? Just, just like weld up the holes grind them off so that they're nice and smooth. Uh, yeah, so hopefully that will be a lot tidier on the front here and obviously on the back. You won't have that ugly, you know, screw fitting as it were, unused. Like, you know what I mean? At least it'll look half decent, you know what I mean? So, um, but yeah, that's done. That's cleaned up. I'm really pleased how that's come out. Uh, obviously I've got to paint it yet, but I thought I'd get on with them. Then I can put them on, then I can paint it all together then, can't I? So, uh, yeah, so that's what we're up to at the moment. Right. Uh, yeah, see, it's all just these little jobs that take so long, don't they? Right, see you in a bit. Here we go. <laughs> okay, a couple of days later. Uh, right, so I've tidied up the pulley. Here is said aircon unit, and that's all cleaned up as well. These are the two bits that you've just seen on the floor that I was welding. I cut the bits off and then welded up, all right, just so that you've got a nice flat plate. Uh, there's the aircon uh, bracket on the back. We've got the bracket on now for the um, throttle cable and obviously the kick down. And then there's your return spring holder. Now, I've got the power steering pump off at the moment. You know, I said about the alignment issue. This is the bracket that basically bolts onto the block. And then there is another bracket actually bolts onto the power steering unit itself. So what we've got here, this is your uh, captive nut. There's your bolt that goes through the water pump. So that sits there like so, okay? Uh, there's your adjustment, obviously, to tighten up the tension on the um, uh, lock belt for the power steering, which is done via that nut there, okay? So that will sit there. Now, this section here, okay, these bolt holes, let me take you over there, basically sits in between this part here, okay? So that will sit into there, right? Now, this is the only bracket that holds this unit to the block, okay? This bracket here is just so that the pump can be held to the bracket and then this bracket goes on to this bracket via that bolt i know it's a bit daft you'd have thought that they would just have the one bracket and then that would have bolted onto that but hey it is what it is um so so basically what i need okay let me come out right i need for the whole lot to come over okay so that this now can be in alignment with the bottom pulley okay but obviously it can't go, I can't get it all to come over because of the way that this sits there like so. Now you need a gap here because you've got the bracket from the uh, aircon unit that sits up against there as well. So that's why that's wider. So basically I can't move the whole unit over purely because of the way that this is, okay? So what my intention to do is basically move this whole section over by, it needs to go over by about three eighths of an inch. That way then, if this is over, then the whole lot can move that way to bring this back over hard up against that edge. All right, so like I say, to move this over, I'm going to have more gap there so to bring that over three eighths is going to bring the whole lot, the whole section over, thus bringing the power steering unit over 
so that the actual pulley can line up with the crank pulley and then the belt should be in line. That's the theory anyway. Right, so this is what we've done so far, okay? We've managed to move it over, all right? Now, this is the original captive nut, all right? Uh, that was sat basically like so, there, okay? Now, it turned out that that there, basically from this inside edge to that inside edge was actually three eighths of an inch. So basically that's what we've got so far. Now, using the original bolt, okay, that will go through like so. And I've just got enough to be able to use the original captive nut like so. Now what I'm gonna do, obviously I'm gonna tidy this up, but if I basically do that, I'll cut this corner off here because obviously it's a sharp corner, I don't need it. So I'll cut that off across there. Okay, so that'll be gone. Then I can weld around there, around here. First off is obviously to make sure that that is screwed into that. Otherwise, I don't want... Let me just take this out, hang on. Basically, what I don't want is for that nut to be like that. I know that's exaggerated, but you know what I mean? Because if it's over just a little bit, then the threads aren't going to catch and I'm going to be in doo-doo. So I'm going to reuse the original captive nut. There's enough thread there to hold that in place. And then, like I say, you've got the 3 h there. That's now come across, so the whole lot can now go across and hopefully we will have the power steering pulley aligned with the crank pulley in theory that should work right let me get on and uh, weld this captive nut on uh, and i'll come back see you in a bit and there it is done job job captive nut on i've just given it a bit of a uh, tidy up with the welds uh given this a paint I've just painted all like on the inside here. Uh, I've just got to do this edge and there. So that'll be done tomorrow. But yeah, sort of George. Job jobbed. Okay, a couple of days later. Right, the uh, power steering is now done. Uh, I can't remember if I said, but I welded three washers together. I've done it twice, once there and then once down for the uh, behind the adjustment bolt because obviously by moving this over by um, three eighths of an inch you now have that three eighths that you got to take up so that's what that was for so that's done I also had to cut this piece out here because this continued over to about here and then was knocking against the uh, bracket for the uh, aircon not that it works but hey it is what it is uh, yeah so that's that done uh what else right yeah we've been cracking on here basically right carbs in uh coils in i had to get some new return springs uh had a little mishap with one of them and the wire wheel i guess that's what happens when you work when you're tired so uh yeah right uh so that's that done got new ones of them the coil is in uh this is now what this area looks like now it's all dried and everything else with the stone chip but obviously bear in mind the battery tray is going to be sat there uh i've cleaned up the uh lower hose so that looks nice now so does the power steering like the uh, pressure hose as it were the feed hose i've just cleaned up all the metal work here put it through the wire wheel so that's nice uh yeah all the belts are on um can't remember if i just showed you but yeah there you go you can now see that where it's lined up with the power steering now this basically was right the way over like so virtually touching this belt and i mean you can see how much it was running off of true so yes i didn't like that but now that's sorted um what else right we've got uh i'll clean up the alternator i can't remember if i've said now clean up the alternator so that's looking nice um fuel line is in i clean that up and down here obviously new filter but i got rid of that loop didn't really like the loop but it was just the way that this pipe was uh 
was you know the way that that was rooted um what else we got oh yeah the new um vacuum uh vacuum hose from the bottom of the distributor to the pcv valve and also the new one in as well from the um inlet manifold to the brake booster so that's all done uh what else what else um that's the top hose that's cleaned up that's done the battery tray i've cleaned up i've put in a section because that was all rotten around here so i'll put a little piece in here uh and there and then cut that square out not the best of jobs but it's nice and strong and as with this channel it's make do amend it saves buying another one doesn't it uh, I know I'm a cheapskate. Um, radiator, <laughs> I've cleaned that up. Um, I've given it a good flush through. Uh, used the airline to clean it all out as well. That's had a coat. Not sure whether or not I'm going to leave it like that or whether I'm going to gloss it. Unsure on that because everything else in there is all nice and shiny and that lot. So I probably will. Uh, yeah, what else? I think that's about it. Carbs on. Well, I've been working, I tell you. I've been, you know, cracking on with it. Um, oh, yeah, here you go. Look, even down the street with little things like this. They're cable ties. Yes, the old zip ties. But basically what you do is come up from underneath, come out of here, then go back down, and then obviously zip them up that way. Then you haven't got that zip tie block showing up here. Uh, they're up underneath. Just a little cheap, but unfortunately they were all broke. Heater hose. Tell you what, you can do me a favour, actually. You can leave a comment below and let me know, because this is something I've never known about, right? Now, I've taken apart and cleaned up and replaced a non-aircon heater matrix, heater box, whatever, but I've never done an aircon one. Some of that I've never understood. Why is there two, like, heater matrixes? Never known that. So if you know, can you do me a favour and leave a comment below so that I can find out. Because uh, what I'm talking with the idea of is either just looping that over for now or going from there to there and then from there to come back again, leaving that one out because when I took all this lot apart, we had a little bit of a mishap. And I don't know whether it's come unclipped or whether it's actually broken inside. But if it's broken, then obviously I'm going to get a load of water inside and I don't want that. But yeah, we are very close to get in this up and running can't wait right so with george see you in a bit right next day we're ready to go yeah have a look at this right everything's in everything's done the aircon brackets in now uh radio is in yes i did paint it up i did gloss it uh batteries in battery trays done i haven't put in the uh, washer bottle yet but obviously that's not important to get this running uh ht leads you name it everything's done the i've just started to top up the radiator and we've got a bit of a wee wee going on unfortunately uh hence the bowls uh i just put i just looped over a hose um for the um uh for the water pump uh yeah basically everything is on and done uh yeah i just started to top up the radiator um got a little bit of a wee wee on that one at the moment because i've obviously knocked it through the last couple of months of doing this believe it or not it's been about three months this lot um so i shall be getting this starting getting this started and filling the radiator up as we go uh yeah so basically Let's start her up for the first time after this rebuild. Here we go. <laughs> Nervous as hell now. <laughs> okay, right, because this is gonna be the first start after the rebuild, everything as regards fuel is gonna be dry like the Sahara. Uh, intake manifold, you name it, everything. Now, new engines or new rebuilt engines are very thirsty, okay, until like the fuel actually gets ingrained again into the metal, blah, 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 as you do. So she definitely needs a real good drink. I'm gonna fill up the bowls and I'm gonna put extra down to try and sort of get plenty of fumes, etc. down in the uh, intake manifold. So we're gonna fill up the uh, bowls like so. 
This is actually a hairdressing dye bowl, like to put on, you know, like when you do your hair, absolutely brilliant for getting down in these bowls. Sort with George and that one. Right, you. You open up like so. You, I can hear that squirt in a way, that's good. That's better, that's what I want, the back one's open. Right. You get a good old drink of fumes down there as well. Right. Blow it on down. Right. Let's give it a go, shall we? Here we go. You sit there. Contact. Have some keys, shall we? Have a look. Fingers crossed, probably get a nice big backfire now. No, my luck, but hey, it is what it is. Contact, here we go. <laughs> well, that's a good start. At least you fired. <laughs> that radiator and I'll be back on. But in sweet, sweet, it's amazing. Our first rebuild, she sounds lush. This now is when things start to get hot and burnt off, etc. Wow. Make sure nothing's in the way, nothing's going to get burnt. Wow. Oh, 
way down here, down there, look. I've just put some uh, Radwell stuff in. It's called K-Seal, if you've never heard of this stuff before. Absolutely fantastic. Absolutely brilliant. Just clear my lens. I've got water all over it. Wow. Fantastic. <coughs> oh. Right, hang on, let me come back. There you go, that's sealed up that leak already. I know it may seem dark, but I'm trying to get every bit of water out of the way just to make sure that the, uh, the radiator has actually stopped leaking, you know what I mean? Listen to that baby hum. She's singing lovely. Singing my favourite tune, definitely. That's definitely singing my favourite tune. Sounds like we've got a bit of a dry bearing down here somewhere. On one of these, don't know where, but radiator is nice and hot. Either that or it's where water's got underneath it, perhaps it's slipping, I don't know. Yeah, it sounds like uh, no, a belt possibly slipping down there, probably because of all the water. Not worried about it. I'm not worried about it at all. Let's see what the temperature's doing. If anything, where are we? Oh no, uh, there is no temperature light or anything over there. We got the idiot lights on this one. Uh, it's had a new temperature switch. Guys, there she is. Mate, listen to that baby sing. Obviously now needs a tuner. Uh, I can't do that until they get the vacuum canister here. Um, wow, my first rebuild. <laughs> Long well shot. Can you tell? <laughs> she sounds so sweet. That is lush. What we've got to do is just adjust the uh, idle screw, etc. etc. So, oh mate, I'll tell you, I am well done. That is fantastic, guys. Thanks ever so much for following along with this build. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. I know you probably haven't been as nervous as what I have. Oh, I can't believe it. <laughs> she sounds sweet. Right, let's crack on. <laughs> right, a couple of days later. Um, yeah, and I'm still smiling. You can't get this coat hanger out of my mouth, I'll tell you. <laughs> right, the uh, vacuum canister uh, has turned up from Mancini Racing. There's a part number there if you want it. Sort with George. And I know I've got the right part because I've already had a look. So, right, this is the new one. 
and you can see the arm the way that, that goes and this is the one that i purchased and you can see the arm goes the wrong way so yeah this is the later one and this is the one that i want right let's go and put it on sort of george right nice quick easy job he says all right let's just undo the uh, clip down the back there undo the clip down there let's get this out of the way you come out of the way he says out of the way tell you what if i just pull that one off that can go out of the way and that can sit down there like so let me take out this vacuum hose on the bottom of the carburetor although i called it the distributor earlier full right you come out from over there that's it that's out the way you sit over there out of the way now this is a bit of a difficult one to show you unfortunately it's getting the camera in can you just see at the end of this screwdriver here okay you see that round circle that there is the uh, tip of the arm there's the arm there coming through okay and it's got to go underneath this top plate which you can see is moving there you go i've just unhooked it that's how easy it is so you've got a Phillips screw there you got a Phillips screw there well it is on this one uh, and basically all you do is lift up that top plate the whole unit slides out and then you just slide the other one in put on the arm between the two plates put the little thing there put the round thing through that hole and do up the two screws right so the easiest thing to do is to just loosen off the clamp bolt uh, that obviously tightens down the distributor because at the end of the day we are going to be checking adjusting the timing anyway so so long as that can move we can now get at that screw and that screw okay so right you out you come out you come now we can turn that around and we can get to that one. There you go. Right, so there you go. That's nice and loose. You might be able to see just here in front of my finger. Okay. Get yourself a little screwdriver just to pry up that top plate at a different angle probably come on well, i've done it just a minute ago didn't i there you go and that is it she's out now just to confirm that they are the same oh i'll tell you what let's go down that way there you go there you go they are the same trust me sort with george there's the new one going in put it between the two plates where are you there in you go in you go in you go there she is right there you go that is it job jobbed that's on let's uh, put some screws in Oh, I don't want to tighten that down until I get the other one in. There you go. Now we can tighten these down. That's that one. And that one. Right, job jobbed. Now, yeah. I'm just going to knit this up purely because it's too loose if you see what i mean i want to be able to move it like so but i also want a bit of resistance when i move it that's better right so i'll be able to move this but she won't move freely as in she won't just move by the engine rocking there you go Right, sort of George. Let's put everything back. 
before I do that, I'm just going to suck on this pipe and show you that it works okay. There you go. Job, job. Lovely. Right, that's that lot back together. Uh, put on another uh, vacuum hose as well. Everything's done. Like I say, she's obviously just a bit loose under resistance for me to adjust the timing. Let's get her warmed up first. Here we go. Sort with George. Right, contact. Here we go. I tell you. Right, let's let her warm up and I'll come back. Just noticed the uh, cold light has come on, so that's good. Great stuff. Right, let's let her warm up. Okay, we got the timing sorted out and we are on approximately 16 hopefully this will show up on camera there you go 15 16 before top dead center she's ticking over lush give her out a rev hang on let me just zoom you out a bit there you go that's better that's lush i'm happy with that now one more test what i like to do now that she's ticking over, all right, uh, and I've set up the time and etc. Just to make sure that it is actually set up okay, what I want to do now is like put the brakes on, put it into gear, and then obviously try and accelerate. I, I don't want to cause any uh, wheel spin or anything like that. I want to hear if it's going to pink under load, and that's one of the best ways to do it. Is sat in the garage, put it into gear, handbrake on. Just in fact, I, I wouldn't put the handbrake on just in case the back wheels do decide to spin. That way, then you ain't going to mess up your back brakes. But put it into gear, put your foot on the brake, just try and accelerate hard ish, you know, and that way, then you'll find out if she's going to peak. So that's what we're going to do. No pinking, nothing. That's going to pull strong out on the road. I am well happy with that. Uh, all I've got to do now is tidy up the air cleaner and put the hood on. Uh, but basically, we're done. That is it. Guys, thanks ever so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Um, I hope you enjoyed this and also hope that it has helped you out in some way. Um, like, share, hit the subscribe button as well if you wouldn't mind. It'll help this channel grow and obviously we can bring more content like we have done. Uh, I will see you guys on the next one. It's all George Garage. Banging. <laughs>